We also have joining us J.G. Audison, and J.G. Audison is from Noble Gold. Jason, thanks for being on the show. I'm here. How are you doing? Very good. Very good. Thanks for being on. We also have Bill Wright, and Bill Wright is from Sea Growth. Bill, thanks for being on the show. <laughs> thanks, George. All right, Bill, tell, tell us a little bit about what you're doing with gold. Well, we're actually uh, on the production side. Um, while Matt's uh, uh, more in the pure physical, we're actually producing the physical gold from, uh, from the earth. Now, Jason, you have supported that uh, as by way as investor. You're the famed investor for the Gold Rush show on Discovery. The season's over. Now that it's done, uh, you know, what can you tell us? Uh, what a year, George. It's, it's, uh, it's so hard with TV and so much uh, production, and then uh, there's so much wait before the rest of the world actually sees what happened. And the last time I was on your, your show, we we talked, uh, and you asked questions about the season and how it had happened and, and success, and it was hard for me to, to speak to it. But uh, like everyone has seen now, um, the guys up uh, in the Klondike uh, did very well. Uh, Hoffman and, and Turin, uh, they were able to... Uh, Really, uh, the cause and uh, the investment to be uh, a success, and um, they didn't reach their exact goal, but uh, we made uh, we made some money. Tell us more about what's going on over at Noble right now. Uh, with this backdrop, people sure. have to pay attention. I mean, they really have to wake up because uh, this is clearly a shot over the bow of investors and and people that have accumulated wealth around the world. Yeah, for many people, they they can't imagine that the uh, that uh, the gold's still in a bull bull cycle. But uh, the reality is, is more or less the 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 status of the world and uh, you know the the resource side of the spectrum. Right here at Noble Mining, uh, we uh, we we're having a busy time right now, and uh, there's a lot of people that have very solid opportunities that uh, that have resources that are. Um, it's more of a. Uh, a a business venture to get into it, not a, a wildcatting uh, venture, uh, where you're harvesting metal at discount, basically. You know, I believe, and and we have uh, staked our our future on that uh, mining and gold and precious metals are going to be here for a while. Um, it needs to be um, our uh, our currency and our our fiscal global situation. I think is going to demand that here in the near future. So it's a good place to be. I agree uh, that we need more backing our paper than just uh, you know the paper. I, you know, I think countries should have to pledge their wealth uh, to back yeah. their currency. In America, we have coal, we have oil, we have gas, and we have gold, we have silver, etc. So I, I really believe in a basket currency. You've made a conscious decision uh, to go into physical bullion, but do it by investing in companies that are mining it. Uh, tell us why you made that jump as opposed to just going out and buying the physical metal. The first and foremost, I'm a bullion guy, so I think everyone ought to have metal. So for me, um, Matt uh, Ferris there is a great resource uh, for owning. I think everyone ought to own metals. I think having precious metals, uh, you know, as a security and insurance policy is a great way to invest your, uh, your, 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 your paper currency, your, your, uh, uh, your dollars. I advocate getting into to equities that have upside uh, exposure for for mining that are w run by uh, by by good management teams. I I like real estate. There, I like all commodities in this landscape in this environment. Uh, for me, uh, what hit well, what I like, uh, is the resource uh, and the gold mining side. Well, you've brought with you uh, Bill yeah. Wright. Now, Bill is the CEO of Sea Growth. Their symbol is CGRA. You own some of this stock, don't you, Jason? You're, I do. You're, I've, you're... Uh, I've actually invested in this company. It's uh, I really trust uh, uh, Bill Wright and his team, and we've really uh, had a good uh, you know few months of really uh, aligning uh, some future potential. Um, he has some has some amazing opportunities up in the Northwest, and uh... but just tell me really quick. You looked at the guys at Gold Rush. You looked at Bill Wright's company here. You know, what are the things you're looking for in these companies, but what makes you hone in on this company or on the guys at Gold Rush? Well, the guys at Gold Rush, I'd, I'd say, was more of a passion opportunity. They're in a, in a spot that uh, historically is one of the richest gold mining uh, areas in the, in the globe, and they had the passion. And uh, so we went, and, you know, our, our focus was to go help them on that passion from – from other company opportunities, it's pure business. Now, now, Bill, 
Tell us about, uh, you know, Jason getting involved. How hard was that process? Uh, well, you know, George, uh, Jason and I first met uh, at the International Mining Expo at the end of last year. And, you know, we just seemed to, uh, seemed to kind of hit it off. We, we have shared values and uh, shared vision for where we uh, see things. Uh, we both uh, are um, feel production is a, a big piece of the puzzle. You know, a lot of junior miners... Uh, like to explore and we're more about production and showing results and you know we just the more we talked uh, the more we hit it off and the more we realized that we had uh, our goals were aligned and uh, uh, he was gracious enough to come on board and we're, we're excited and happy for it now the symbol of your company is CGRA and now where are you traded at what what exchange are you traded on uh, we're actually on the OTC markets uh, as a pink sheet company. Okay. Now, Jason, why did you focus in here on sea growth? Uh, they have they have some uh, they have an ore that's sitting on the ground in one of their mines. They have uh, uh, current production in the, in the pipeline that can uh, can can turn revenue. Um, they need some capital. They need they needed a few uh, components to really bring success. I mean, they have they have all the components, in my opinion, not just a pipe dream and. Uh, that's where they stand uh, from a company. Now, you know, as I as I I've got Matt Ferris here from US Gold Bureau. Matt, you got a young junior miner like this. You, you know, talk to me about global supplies of gold. I mean, well, the, actually that, that's right, George. And uh, you know, I, I certainly admire uh, what Jason and, and Bill do. It is very hard to nail down the World Gold Council. Uh, they do not have exact numbers on what the annual market is for gold and gold trading. And most of that, the reason behind that is that so much of it trades on the secondary markets. Someone that has gold, they call us, we make markets in it, we will tip, buy it from them and turn it over to somebody else. So that's not removing new production out of that, you know, Jason and Bill are pulling out of the ground, but it's just changing hands between gold that already exists. For that reason, it's very hard to track the annual market in precious metals, whether you're talking global or just in the U.S. I'm concerned that if the ETF was to actually go to try to get physical gold, that there wouldn't be enough there. Do you do you have thoughts on that? I, I do. I mean, there's a lot of uh, information online about that, and that the, the subject of rehypothecation that uh, has been talked about quite frequently, and it, it's probably a, a deeper conversation than just the time we have in this show. What they're doing is they're leveraging their position, so they're, they're selling. People are rushing to GLD so fast, they can, there's not enough gold out there to back what people are buying at GLD. And, and, you know, again, I mentioned it earlier in the show, George, don't rush into GLD because of what's happening in Cyprus. Don't rush into an ETF. Either buy the miners, which actually have physical assets and they have leases and rights to go and pull gold out of the ground, or buy the physical gold yourself. Because if you buy a ticker symbol in a stock account, the government can just seize that as well. Now, Jason, that's that's why you've gone directly to the to the miners. You want to actually own the miner that has the physical gold themselves, right? It, you're you're right about that. But even more so than that, not all miners are close to the gold. It's the miners that are in production that are close to gold. Some of them uh, basically uh, they have a visibility into geology and they claim that on their assets, on their uh, balance sheet. But uh, they're they're no closer to gold than you or I would be. So. I like the mining opportunities that uh, that harvest and produce cash flow. Bill, talk to us about uh, your your uh, going forward. You producing gold. What do you do with the physical gold uh, as your company gets it? Well, we we actually are just now starting to hit our strides for production. Um, we spent the last uh, six months putting some pieces in place. We've just made some very key acquisitions uh, of equipment. Uh, finalized the deal. Uh, for property that uh, holds some very significant uh, assets for us uh, and is surrounded by thousands of acres of uh, uh, historically producing mines. So we've been basically putting all the pieces in place. Uh, up here in Washington, we do get a bit of snow. So uh, as that thaws over the next month or so, we'll start putting things into place and, uh, and then producing.